I wish to start off by saying how honoured I am to be here, to be able to deliver this message on behalf of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights at the opening of this exhibition on football and human rights, which has been graciously hosted by the Government of Qatar. It may be questioned whether or not sport has any links with human rights, but of course, clearly it does. Urbanisation, modern technology, economic trends and other factors, not least of which were the lockdowns that so many people experienced during this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, have highlighted how important sport and exercise is for our physical and mental well-beings. The World Health Organization has identified physical activity, inactivity as one of the four major global killers linked to various diseases from diabetes to cancer. Engaging in sport and physical activity is key to preventing such diseases and government programs to encourage and support people to engage in sport and physical activity is an important tool for the realization to the right to health which underpins the enjoyment of so many of our other human rights. Fostering public and individual engagement in sports is not only beneficial for our mental and physical health, it can also help create a sense of community and to build bridges between communities while fostering the values of healthy competition, fair play, participation, adherence to the rules and camaraderie, all in the search of physical excellence. Football, the beautiful game, is an excellent example of this engaging and uniting millions of people from across the planet, from all backgrounds, genders, abilities, ethnic and religious communities, rich and poor. Like the Olympic Games, the quadrennial men's FIFA World Cup brings together the peoples of the world in a celebration of common interests while respecting diversity and the values that underpin the sport of football. Another way that sport transects with human rights is in its engagement with the private sector. Sport, in particular football, has become a multi-million dollar business with an annual growth rate above 7%. Multinational and local corporations now sponsor local and national teams. Football players have become household names, as much for their exploits on the football pitch as for their commercial and potentially their personal activities. Matched with modern technology and diverse media platforms, people can follow their favourite football players on TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat and a myriad of other platforms. Increasingly, football players have become influencers with potentially vast audiences, using these platforms to speak out on human rights violations, racism on the pitch, discrimination, the rights of LGBTQ plus persons, the rights of persons with disabilities and other human rights issues of concern. Ladies and gentlemen, events like the Men's FIFA World Cup are not just celebrations, but they are also major projects that bring with them prestige for the countries that are hosting them, and a lot of return, potentially, for the investors. As a result, they also bring with them a degree of scrutiny, particularly in relation to the human rights issues within the host countries that may or may not be directly linked with the event itself. It is therefore important that we encourage governments and businesses engaged in supporting sport that such events are carried out and implemented according to the highest standards, including taking the opportunity to pro be proactive in identifying human rights deficits and to take meaningful steps to address them. A positive example of this has been provided by the Government of Qatar, which, in relation to hosting the Men's FIFA World Cup later this year, has meaningfully engaged in improving protection of labour rights for those employed to build the necessary infrastructure for the event through stronger legislation and enhanced cooperation with the International Labour Organization, which has resulted in enhanced respect for the rights of all workers in the country. Indeed, the hosting of major sporting events is a massive economic and social undertaking particularly given the need to put in place appropriate infrastructure and policies that will ensure that the event is delivered in a safe and inclusive way that upholds and promotes human rights. However, the legacy of investing in hosting large-scale sporting events is not just in the improved sporting transport, accommodation and other infrastructure. And it's not just in the economic boost uh, that hosting such events may potentially contribute to the local economy. The true legacy lay in the positive social involvement of the players, the supporters, volunteers, workers and others, all of whom participate to ensure that every aspect of the event is a success. And it lay in the sense of community, equality and positive values that it engenders for the future. As we move towards the Men's FIFA World Cup in November 2022, we know Qatar will welcome the world. From a human rights perspective, it is important that the competition is delivered successfully in a safe and inclusive way that upholds and promotes human rights. 
I wish the government of Qatar and the people of Qatar and all those participating in the event my very best wishes for its success. In closing, and on behalf of my office, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, I want to thank the organisers for hosting this exhibition. I would really like to extend my congratulations to the artist for the wonderful paintings that are on display here today. I hope that this event and in the future the hosting of the World Cup will be successful and that the positive enjoyment of the benefits that the beautiful game brings to so many of us. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you again.